Now, you may have noticed since the Trump-Putin summit in Helsinki earlier this week that many in the media are now asking, who exactly is Bill Browder? That's because during a joint press conference with President Trump, Putin said Russian investigators are willing to cooperate with the Mueller investigation into Russian meddling, including uh, even allowing U.S. officials to travel to Russia in order to question individuals indicted by Mueller. Take a listen. For instance, we can bring up the Mr. Mr. Browder in this particular case. Business associates of Mr. Browder have earned over one and a half billion dollars in Russia. They never paid any taxes, neither in Russia nor in the United States. And yet the money escaped the country. They were transferred to the United States. So why is Putin so interested in Browder? Let's toss that question to executive of the Ron Paul Institute, Daniel McAdams. Uh, so Daniel, let me ask you first, who is Bill Browder and why might the Russian government want to question him? Well, Bill Browder is a fascinating uh, character. He's the grandson of the head of the American Communist Party. So his family has kind of a curious background. It's actually doubly curious when it turns out that he was a big hedge fund operator uh, in the 90s in Russia when billions of dollars uh, uh, were taken by corrupt individuals. Uh, fortunes were made. And in fact, Browder himself made about a, you know, over a billion dollars with his hedge fund. Uh, he was a very wealthy man in that era. And actually, uh, his very positive attitude toward, uh, toward Russia continued through the uh, Putin era, despite what you may hear on television. Uh, there's actually some videos of him saying how great the Putin government is, what a great place it is to do business. Everything was fine and dandy until uh, uh, it seems that some of his uh, past caught up with him, at least according to the accusations that he was a uh, uh, dodging taxes and engaged in some nefarious business activities. He became wanted in Russia for tax evasion, and that's when he absconded. Uh, he also renounced his U.S. citizenship and became a U.K. citizen, uh, and that is apparently, according to some uh, reports, uh, to avoid taxes in the U.K. So uh, uh, he's a person who's come uh, under a lot of scrutiny, and in fact, uh, his, be, uh, his, his case is probably, many people at least point to the fact that this is the dawn, uh, his case is the dawn of the sort of new anti-Russia era in the U.S. You're talking about the uh, late uh, 2000s, early 2010s. And what is the Magnitsky Act and how has it been central to renewing the new Cold War? Yeah, it's very important to go back to this era. And, and I was working for Dr. Paul in Congress in 2012 when the Magnitsky Act passed. Essentially, his accountant uh, by the name of Sergei Magnitsky uh, was also indicted on, t on, on charges uh, in, in Russia. Uh, he was jailed, and apparently he died while in jail. The claim was that he was tortured. Uh, others say that he was uh, an ill person. Uh, but this person died in jail. Uh, it was his accountant, and, and it became a cause celeb. I mean, I think there were a lot of people trying to cook up, and I know on Capitol Hill it was definitely the case. A lot of people were trying to cook up a new Cold War with Russia. Russia is the enemy. And this became kind of the cause celeb of people who wanted to do that. Uh, and it was a frenzy around that time to get this passed. Uh, ironically, it was just drafted by one or two people. And most Congress members, to be honest, didn't know a thing about it, knew nothing about it. Uh, but that really was the basis for, for the bad relations now between the U.S. and Russia. All right, Daniel McAdams, executive director of the Ron Paul Institute. Thank you so much. Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.